Hi, Gerald MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. We've had a hot and wet summer, so it's no surprise that tropical diseases are on the rise in the United States and worldwide, including the mosquito-borne dengue fever. The CDC has advised healthcare providers to be on the lookout for symptomatic cases. Many with the disease have a history of travel abroad, but dengue is now thought to be spreading locally right here in the USA. At least 2,300 cases have been reported in the U.S. this year, three times more than at the same point last year. Worldwide, dengue is an even worse issue. It affects about 400 million people yearly. In 2019, places as far apart from each other as Singapore, Nicaragua, and Bangladesh reported community-wide outbreaks, and that is not since the beginning of that year, but on the same day. So what is dengue? Dengue is a flavivirus that's spread by infected Aedes and other mosquito species that are acting as vectors. Vectors transmit the disease from human to human through their bite, sickening their victims while suffering no ill effects themselves. Only female mosquitoes bite, by the way. There are several different subtypes called DenV1, DenV2, DenV3, DenV4, etc., which all present with similar symptoms. Infection with one subtype of dengue usually gives lifelong immunity to that type, but only short-term immunity to the others. Now, if you get infected again with a different subtype, the second infection actually increases the risk of a more severe version of the disease. So what are the symptoms of dengue fever? Thankfully, most dengue infections are asymptomatic. That means you don't even know you have it. If you're in the unlucky minority that gets sick, however, you can expect signs and symptoms about 4 to 14 days after the infectious bite. You may see a high fever, up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow! And that is usually of sudden onset. You'll notice severe bone, joint, and muscle pain, so bad that dengue's nickname is break bone fever. Severe headaches, pain behind the eyes, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting, skin rashes, these are all additional symptoms you might notice. So why are dengue cases on the rise? Rates of dengue infection are thought to be increased because of major population growth in warmer regions of the U.S., and that's since 1960. As a resident of South Florida, I believe that the widespread introduction of residential air conditioning around that time may have precipitated the explosion in potential victims. Climate change is also a factor in dengue spread. Temperature highs down here in South Florida are a couple of degrees higher and increasingly warm and wet summers are favorable for breeding mosquitoes. The influx of migrants who have asymptomatic dengue may actually play a part in local mosquitoes becoming infected in the U.S. these days. Thankfully, most resolve those symptoms within a week or two and become immune to the specific strain of dengue they contracted. Remember, though, there are four. If anyone with a history of dengue fever gets sick again, though, it's likely with a different strain and is often worse than the original. Although most will still recover, a small minority will develop a life-threatening version of the disease called dengue hemorrhagic fever, characterized by resistant fevers, bleeding from the nose and gums, blood and lymphatic vessel damage, and liver enlargement. In the most severe cases, the disease may progress further to dengue shock syndrome, where massive bleeding, organ failure, and circulatory collapse occurs, very similar to what you'd see in end-stage Ebola. Unfortunately, there's no specific therapy at present that cures dengue fever. Treatment is symptomatic, for example, acetaminophen for fever. NSAIDs like ibuprofen would lower the temperature, but should be avoided because of their tendency to increase the risk of bleeding. Ensuring the patient is well hydrated is extremely important, as is bed rest. So using mosquito repellent, covering bare skin, and keeping windows and doors shut if you have air conditioning, and using window and door screens if you don't, is also very important. Mosquito netting on beds and cribs, well, that's another option. Of course, the less mosquitoes in your neck of the woods, the less chance of getting dengue. Reducing local populations by eliminating junk that could hold standing water, that's important. Female mosquitoes are not picky where they lay their eggs. Very little water is needed to support the larvae. They've even been found in bottle caps. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nurse Amy here. Just wanted to remind you guys not to forget to visit store.doomandbloom.net for all your holiday shopping, gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any day actually. If you want to help somebody survive a first aid issue, 
Make sure you go to store.doomandbloom.net.